Coming up on Torrance today, our municipal airport was top of mind at last night's city council meeting. We have the recap. National Farmers Market Week is approaching and our local market manager gives us a glimpse into the reality of our farmers. Plus, one resident slash pro volleyball player takes the top prize at a major tour right here in the South Bay. All this and more coming up right now on Torrance Today. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Wednesday, July 26. I hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you so much for joining us. Here is our first story. The Torrance City Council met last night to conduct city business. It was a busy evening with lots of community members weighing in on the issue surrounding airport noise. And council members made some key decisions. I have met with... Uh uh, folks from the uh, Torrance Airport uh, Association uh, share some of the information they want to share with me. And I've also uh, took a meeting with those from the uh, uh, Torrance uh, uh, Association who has uh, uh, wants to reform how we operate uh, uh, the city of Torrance uh, Airport. They approved the implementation of airport landing fees for all transient aircraft and Torrance-based fixed-wing flight school operators with fleets of more than three aircraft. There are certain exemptions for military, public safety, and medical flights, as well as for Robinson Helicopter. The city leaders also put a moratorium on additional flight schools, a draft voluntary letter of agreement between the city and the schools already operating there, in which the latter said it won't use the south runway for flight training, among other things, will be implemented. The council received updates on the legalities of banning touch-and-go landings on both the south and north runways of the airport, approved plans to phase out leaded gas in the coming months, and more. You can watch the entire meeting on City Cable as well as on the city's Facebook and YouTube pages. Last night was jam-packed with many other agenda items. The Torrance Certified Farmers Market received the proclamation for National Farmers Market Week, which takes place in early August. I would like to spotlight our farmers who have put in a lot of work to show up for each and every market for 38 years. Our farmers have worked through droughts, through flooding, and now picking in the hot summer heat so that the Torrance community has a place to get their produce freshly picked the day before. Now in its 24th year, National Farmers Market Week highlights the vital role farmers markets play in our nation's family food system. With fun events, programs, contests, activities, and more, the week helps to boost market attendance and visibility and is a great opportunity to showcase how much value markets, like ours, bring to their communities. City Council members also accepted and appropriated a $20,000 donation from Friends of the Torrance Theater Company to support its annual summer musical production called Kinky Boots. This rising costs uh, of, of production uh, have sort of uh, generated the need to keep, we, we want to keep the music live and, uh, and keep those uh, production values up. We encourage, we open a week from this Saturday, right here at the James Armstrong Theater. So we encourage everyone to come out and see us. In addition, they also adopted an ordinance amending the Torrance Municipal Code pertaining to the regulation of car wash facilities. While not on the agenda, our city leaders expressed their condolences to Fire Chief David Dumay, who had lost his mother earlier in the day yesterday. City Cable was there when she pinned the badge on him after becoming the city's fire chief last December. The somber moment was followed by more positive news when council member Bridget Lewis announced that she became a grandmother again, or as she likes to call it, Gigi. Again, you can watch the complete replays of our council meeting on our website, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, right here on Torrance City Cable. 
UCLA Health collected much needed blood donations at the Southern California Regional Occupational Center this week. I've had eight procedures, surgeries since I was seven months old and I feel like it's just one way for me to sort of um, pay it back. It should be a uh, a thing that everyone is aware of that they can give. Life is full of accidents and things that happen and and a lot of times it happens to somebody else but there's a moment when it happens to you. You give for others but you never know when you're going to need it yourself so it's one of those things that's hard to ignore when you really when you really think about the importance of it. We do get a lot of our blood from the students, the high school students and during the summer obviously they're out of school so it makes it a challenge for us to get them to come in to community drives to donate so we're lacking all those units that we do get from students. It's our duty to make sure that we're helping supply the hospitals in case patients need blood whether it's for surgeries or trauma patients, it's a very important for it to be there for someone when they need it. Donors needed to be at least 17 years old and weigh 110 pounds or more. All blood types were and are needed, especially O negative, the universal blood type. If you would like to donate, go to ucedonor.com, type in your zip code, and all of the nearby donation sites will pop up. Greta Gerwig's Barbie claimed the top box office spot with a massive $162 million so far in ticket sales from North American theaters. Yes, pink is everywhere, and one local bakery has gotten in on the pink party. We have a lot of different Barbie things going out today. Uh, you know, we have a Barbie cake, we have Barbie brownie suckers, Barbie pedophores, Barbie cookies. Anything pink and Barbie, we have it. The first day, we had people coming in in Barbie outfits, like moms and their kids in like pink outfits because they were gonna take our product over and then go to the movies, which was awesome. It, made, it created a whole cool experience for them. Everything looks so delicious. Torrance Bakery is located at 1341 El Prado Avenue. The Association of Volleyball Professionals, the biggest and longest running professional beach volleyball tour in the U.S., came to the South Bay recently, and Torrance resident Theo Bruner won first place. Still match point. That was Theo and his partner Trevor Crabb winning big on a neighboring beach at the AVP Gold Series Hermosa Beach Open. Theo and Trevor took down Taylor Crabb and Taylor Sander 19-21, 21-13, 15-10 in the men's final. Theo has now won five times on the AVP Tour with three coming right on that South Bay sand, each with a different playing partner. The city's Community Services Division has been celebrating its inaugural festival season with Torrent Summer Nights since early June. And this weekend, two works by William Shakespeare will be hitting the stage. Yes, live theater is a summer staple at the amphitheater. And this year, Shakespeare by the Sea will perform Hamlet and Twelfth Night on Saturday, July 29th and Sunday the 30th. Picnics, blankets, and low-back lawn chairs are all welcome. And the best part? It is free. Torrent Summer Nights goes through September 3rd, so there is still time to take in a musical, movie, or live theater at Wilson Park. For more information, visit torrentca.gov slash cultural services. Still ahead, it's Wave Wednesday. Go inside a local tech company that works with SpaceX, Google, Meta, and Apple, just to name a few. We'll take you inside Aravant in 60 seconds. Get it. 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 Is she gonna get it, Daddy? She'll get it. Get it. Get it. When you bring home a Goodwill find, you give your whole town a reason to celebrate because you're also funding local job training and placement programs in tech, healthcare, and more. Goodwill. 
Bring good home. At the end of every episode of Torrance Today, we want to share a positive story that fits the theme for the day. On this Wave Wednesday, I'm taking you behind the scenes of Aravant, an engineering and manufacturing firm whose products further the research and development plus product development of companies working on some of the world's most innovative technology. Aravant engineers manufacture hardware for millimeter wave applications. You can see our work at all of the leading technology companies that are doing cutting edge research. Companies like Google, SpaceX, Meta, Apple. And we're so proud that our work that comes out of here, this factory in Torrance, is able to support you know, work that they're doing at those organizations. The applications in these frequencies really have enormous economic and social impacts now and into the future. Some of the applications are things like radar and communications for aerospace and defense. You have medical imaging and using sub terahertz frequencies to detect cancers and tumors and things like that. Another one is security. We all know about the body scanners, that's millimeter wave. It can get even more advanced than that so that, for example, we could even start bringing water back onto planes because the imaging technology is going to be so much more sophisticated. And then, of course, when it comes to national security and supporting our warfighters, a lot of those systems are being upgraded into higher frequencies. And then the future, which is IoT, where all these devices are connected together, autonomous vehicles, smart cities, earth monitoring, and then, of course, 5 and 6G for expanded communications. And then a big part of our business is actually supporting test instrumentation. So those are creating the tools that anybody working in these frequencies need in order to do the work that they're doing. With CEO Wendy Shu at the helm, this company is doing really big things. Its products are tools and building blocks that engineers and scientists can use as they try to unlock the potential of working at extremely high frequencies. Learn more about Aravant on the latest episode of Common Sense at 8.30 and 10.30 p.m. right here on City Cable. Well, that is our show for today. Let us know if you have a positive story to tell by emailing us at torrentstoday at torrentca.gov. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more news from and for our Torrance community. Have a great day.